Hello guys and uh, welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking about the primary accumulator, uh, some of the basic components and functions of it, and how we set it up on site. We're going to start by looking at um, the fluid pump and how it pressurizes the bottles. So back here we have our primary fluid reservoir that holds all of the fluid in its unpressurized state. Uh, what happens is it gets drawn in to the charge pump right here, and then the charge pump pulls in out of the tank, pressurizes it with a small little triplex piston pump, and then distributes it into this main line right here, where it goes around back of the unit and into the accumulator bottles. Okay, so once the fluid comes from the pump, the charge pump in the front, it comes around through this piping and goes into these accumulator bottles here. Now the accumulator bottles are what actually hold the pressurized fluid um, and store it until it needs to get sent to the primary BOPs that are being actuated. So inside of these accumulator bottles, we have a rubber bladder like this that's full of nitrogen gas with about a thousand PSI of nitrogen gas. So what happens is when the hydraulic fluid gets pumped into the bottom of the bottle by the pump. It's going to compress this bladder and compress the gas inside it. And once that bladder is compressed, that's, that uh, expansion force is what's actually trying to force the fluid back out of the bottle and down the line uh, to the BOPs. So this compressed bladder is in effect what powers the fluid to go to the BOPs. So the fluid is in the bottles, but as you can see, this line tees up here as well. And what this is, is the line that brings the pressurized fluid from the bottles up into the manifold. And the manifold that we'll look at in a second is where the fluid actually gets directed through the handles out to the actual BOPs that are being run. Um, the fluid comes up here and it comes into this device here, which is the manifold pressure regulator. So in effect, what this does is there's a big spring in here and it allows 3,000 PSI of pressure um, coming from the bottles and then we have 1,500 PSI going into the manifold. That's our operating pressure for our BOPs. And this regulator is what controls that 1,500 PSI. So as the pressure in the manifold drops, when we activate a BOP, the pressure regulator opens a bit, allowing more fluid into the manifold to bump that pressure back up to 1500. What we have behind here is the high-low bypass device. And what this uh, bypass device does is basically bypasses the pressure regulator so that when we activate it, it will take the high pressure 3000 PSI fluid from the bottles and dump it right into our manifold, um, giving us the full 3000 PSI into the manifold uh, we would use this if we had to shear pipe and we needed all the force possible uh, to get those pipe, those shear rams to close. So here we have the actual ma operating manifold. Um, so all the fluid comes from the, the regulator into the manifold and then we use these four-way handles to send fluid to either the open side or the closed side which actually activates the BOPs. And we do these that with these handles. They can go one way to close it and the other way to open it. And uh, basically that just takes pressure in from the manifold, directs it to one side or the other. So also here on the manifold, we have the pressure uh, gauges that show you the pressure in the accumulator bottles, which is usually set to 3000. And then this gauge right here shows the operating pressure in the manifold, which is the pressure that's actually going to the BOPs themselves. Over here, we have the annular pressure as well, which is the pressure that is in this annular circuit over here. It has its own regulator valve and its own handle, and it runs completely independent than all of the other RAM type BOPs on the accumulator. So these two bottles in the back here are what are called the nitrogen backup system. Not all primary accumulators will have these, but all deep well accumulators have these um, as a safety backup system in the event that the pump has failed 
and for whatever reason these uh, accumulator bottles aren't holding pressure like they should. In this case, we would open up these bottles and the actual nitrogen gas would get dumped through this silver line right into the um, operating manifold and then as the bubbles of gas expand in the hydraulic fluid, they would provide enough pressure for us to actuate the handles and close the ram that we need to close. Okay, here we have these three components, this box, the panel, and this generator here. Um, what these pieces of equipment allow us to do is control the accumulator and control the BOPs from a distance. So we call this the remote panel, uh, and this will be placed somewhere on location to allow um, faster or more practical access um, to the driller, or the operator, or the supervisor to allow them to, to close the panel or to close the BOPs without coming all the way to the accumulator. The generator supplies electric power to the panel and to the control box. The panel is where we have the actual controls for all the different BOPs and each control here corresponds to one of the handles that's on the manifold of the BOPs. So, the pressure gauges allow us to see what pressure is in the accumulator and then we can activate whatever RAM or BOP that we need to activate from a distance. These silver lines that you see all over the accumulator, these are the actuating lines that will take hydraulic pressure from the, the signal from the remote box and actually physically function the handles um, via the remote panel. So you'll see these these silver lines all over the place and when you function the BOP remotely you'll actually see the handle function on the operating manifold uh, and that's all controlled by these little stainless steel control lines. So thanks for watching guys that was just a very basic introduction to the accumulator um, some of the major components in future videos we're going to be having a closer look at some of the other components that we didn't discuss uh, we're going to be having a look at the drawdown test and also some of the stuff that you'll be looking at uh, when you see the accumulator in the field, uh, the things we look at just to make sure it's, it's uh, working properly and ready to go for when we need it. So until then, take care and we'll talk to you next time.